All right, so I'm outside of a 2018 Honda Pilot Touring. Uh, I'm gonna start at the back and we're gonna walk through some features and functions. So let me pop open the power tailgate real quick and just show you the back and then we'll walk around and we'll walk you through the front. So back, so you can see I have my third row and then my storage space. Uh, down here in storage, I do have a carpet finish right here. You'll notice I can do some cool things with this. I can throw this down and create a lip. So if I had groceries or anything like that, you can see the lip that I've created. Also, what you can do with this car is flip this piece over. It's hard plastic on the other side. Same thing, slide it down, I got a lip. So now if I have anything that's wet or I'm worried about, I can store it here. My third row folds down. It's pretty simple stuff. See if I can do this one-handed. Fold them down, just that easy. Same side, other side. All I gotta do is pull my tab and it throws down. Uh, my second row folds down also uh, to throw the seats back. So you can see the buttons right here to throw the seats, uh, uh, slide them forward and back if you're sitting in that third row. You can see I have air vents in my third row also. So I just wanted to show you a couple things. You'll see that I do also have a 12-volt uh, power outlet back here too, along with speakers. So I'm gonna walk around to the front and walk you through some features and functions and explain what's going on. So let's walk around to the front of this car. So right when we get up to the door, I'll start you there and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, you'll notice that on my door, I've got power windows. My driver and passenger side are both uh, auto up and down. So I can touch them one time and it'll adjust for me. Uh, above that, I do have my door locks and then of course my window locks. Uh, to the left, I should say, on the door, I do have memory seating to set it. All you do is set this, you'll see them flash and then press it to set. So easy enough, not hard to do. And you notice the one and two will actually collaborate with the keys. So on your keys, I will show you on the back of your key, it's gonna be listed with one or two so you can correlate those two together. Well, I got the key out, I'll show you a couple things. The car does come with a remote start. To use this, you wanna press the lock button and then press the remote start button. That'll fire up the car. Uh, it essentially can run for 20 minutes and then it'll turn itself off. Cool thing about this is if it'll it'll turn on, uh, it'll recognize the outside temperature and adjust either the heat or the AC. Uh, so it's just kind of nice to know that it'll do that for you. Moving over to the left side of the dash. All right, so your mirror controls are right here, left and right. Uh, one really cool thing about this is if I have it set to the left or right, when I throw the car in reverse, if it's set to the left, it's gonna adjust the left mirror down to help me in reversing. So just a cool function uh, that the car does. If you don't want it to do it to either mirror, you can set it right to the center and it won't. So just keep that in mind, kind of nice. Econ button, whenever you turn this on, you'll see a green leaf come on up there. So I'm flashing on and off. Uh, that improves gas mileage on the car. How it works is it shuts down some electrical systems on the front end of the car, affecting things like the, uh, the AC unit on how hard it blows and the accelerator on how fast the car will take off and go. So my parking sensors right here, uh, you'll notice I do have the light right there. Uh, so for front and back, I got parking sensors. This is my road departure mitigation system. So if I start to veer off the side of the road and this is on, uh, it will start to beep inside of the car and it will shake the wheel. Make sure I'm paying attention. I've woken up if I'm getting drowsy. Uh, my collision mitigated braking system. So this is always on unless I press this for three to four seconds and hold it uh, to turn it off. When you do, it'll beep at you and you'll see that. So I'm going to turn it back on here. Uh, so that way you know what's going on. So and you have to hold this for two to three seconds to get this to turn off So it's not something you're gonna accidentally bump vehicle stability assist this works with my traction control So the event that I go into skid it's going to transfer power to whichever tire has better traction uh, To help correct that skid. So that's what this button is only time you would want to turn that off is if you were stuck in the mud and wanted to spin your tires So moving up to the steering wheel so up here, the first button I'm gonna show you right here, this is gonna to toggle between some different menus over here. So between navigation, it'll jump between Bluetooth and audio. So it's just a quick jump between those to make life a little bit easier for you. My volume controls are the plus and minus. My left and right is gonna jump between your favorite stations, whether it be FM, AM, or satellite radio, or if you're listening to music, jump to the next track. Uh, my source button will, you know, will toggle between FM, AM, uh, USB, Bluetooth, whatever I have connected up. So that's how this works. Um, now, this next button, I turn down the volume here, so I'm going to turn stereo on. This, depending on what audio screen I have pulled up, is going to pull up some like quick uh, jumps that I can make, right? So you're going to see different parts of the pad that I can use to do different things here. So that's what this is when I pull up audio. And so those correlate with the buttons on here as far as wanting to jump around and change things. So if I wanted to scan, um, if I want to, you know what I mean? So I'm pressing down and up. So I'm saying, yeah, I want to scan. I get to that and then select it with a source button. So that's what this button's for, right? Uh, my Bluetooth control. So to answer a call, to hang up a call, 
voice command. Uh, cool thing about the voice command button, I can press this and say, you know, call so and so and kind of work through the prompts that way. If I have my phone plugged in to the USB uh, for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which would be this one right here, um, it's going to allow me some additional options. Uh, you still have access to Siri either way. So if you want to ask Siri to do things, you can. Uh, but additionally, uh, it just gives me a little bit more use of, you know, Siri, text this person, Siri, call this person, Siri, give me directions this, and it'll start pulling up the maps and things like that. So pretty cool feature. And it works for OK Google, too, if you have an Android-based phone. So just know that. Uh, moving over to the right side. Uh, if the main button right here, so when I turn the main button on, you'll see LKS and ACC flashing at me. That's Lane Keep Assist and Adaptive Cruise Control. Cool thing about this button is it will stay on. So if I turn the car off, go into the store, come back, it'll be on again. So you don't have to constantly turn this button on every time you get in the car. What that means is when I get in the car and I get the speed, I can just press set and it'll now set my speed uh, for the adaptive cruise control. I can then use this button to select the distance it's going to keep between me and the car in front of me. So on here, you can see these boxes as they get less and less boxes. That means that there's going to be less and less space between me and the car in front of me. So the most boxes down to the least amount of boxes. So that's how this function works. It uses radar down in the, in the uh, grill to detect the car in front of you. If it loses track of the car in front of you, it'll actually alert you up in uh, up in this region. It'll, you, it'll show you. So next button, lane keep assist. So lane keep assist, whenever I turn this on, you're gonna see these dotted lines come on, which I'm turning on and off. When those fill in solid, it means it's now reading the road. That works from 45 miles an hour to 90 miles an hour. Uh, and keep in mind, if your windshield wipers are on, this function doesn't work because they want you to really focus on the road. How this works is it uses a camera that is up in this box right here to detect lines on the road. So uh, it's going to detect them as you're driving. Uh, keep in mind, if you get on a really wonky road, man, that where all the lines are all messed up or it's been repaved a million times, this feature isn't going to work as well. It's not 100% proofed. You know, it's not a self-driving car. So just keep that in mind. It's here to help you. It's to prevent you drifting in and out of lanes. So just just a little warning there. It's not a, It's not going to be perfect all the time. Uh, the next couple of buttons right here. So. These are going to toggle between the screens that I'm seeing up here. So depending on if I want to see my oil life, if I want to see the exact tire pressure in each tire, uh, compass, you know what I mean? That'll also give me a turn by turn direction uh, if I was a navigating model, uh, and then my trips, right? So that's what this is. And if I wanted to reset my trips, I can do it from right here. Uh, this car does have paddle shifters. So you can see that I've got them right there as far as the plus and minus. So it just allows you a little bit more shifting control. The car also has auto on off headlights. So you can see that they're set right now. And then my fog light controls, that's on. That's obviously off. It's toggled with it. Anytime I hit my right blinker in this car, you're going to see this camera come on. Uh, red line is the end of your car. Red to orange is a car length and orange to orange is a car length. So just a super helpful feature to where I don't have to look back over my shoulder and risk looking away from the road and possibly hitting the car in front of me. I don't have to turn the blinker on to get this feature to come on. There is a button right here that I can press and turn that feature on anytime I want. So you'll see it's on. And it'll stay on until I press that button again. The plus of that is if I heard a motorcycle or something like that, I was like, man, I don't know where that guy went. I could look and see if he's sitting in my blind spot, and that's just what the case is. So moving over here. So my next deal. This is going to be the controls for the windshield wipers on the back of the car, and then moving the whole deal will move uh, the front windows. And then they are intermittent, so I can control the exact speed. Uh, moving down, you'll notice it is a remote start. Uh, excuse me, I should say push button start. It is also a remote start too, so just keep that in mind. Uh, so you can see the remote start. Start it up, put your foot on the brake, press start, and it'll fire up the car. If you don't put your foot on the brake, it's like turning your keys backwards in a car. It just turns accessory mode on uh, to where the electronics will come on, but not the, the car itself. Uh, the touchscreen. So let's start you off with the homepage up here. So you'll see your general screens right up here. Uh, navigation is set up through Garmin. Uh, so it's going to be pretty easy to use. You can shift around, you can pinch, you can pull. So it's set up a lot like what you would expect. It works a lot like someone's phone. Uh, so people have a, a pretty easy time working through this. You can use voice commands for this. So keep that in mind too. Um, as far as searching and different things you can do, uh, let me pull up some stuff here. So let's back out of this screen, uh, my search button right there. And then I have different ways I can search. You can add your home addresses where you can just tap it and say, go home, uh, previous journeys and places you've been. Uh, you can save in different places that you've been to. So it's just kind of nice knowing that you can do that. Uh, so you can see saved over here as far as saving in addresses. I like that because then, you know, if there's three or four places that most people go 90% of their day, I, you know what I mean? Whether it be homework and then maybe one other place, the gym. Uh, you know what I mean? Your, your favorite restaurants, stuff like that. You can save them in. So it's just kind of nice. So that's how the navigation system works. Phone right here. So this will get you to your Bluetooth uh, to get to your, your contacts, your calls, things like that. It'll prompt you for your first phone to add it and walk you through. If you need to add a secondary phone, how to do so, click on settings. From there, we are going to go to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. From there, you want to go to Bluetooth device list. Woo, let me get it. So Bluetooth device list. And then at the bottom, add a Bluetooth device. 
From there, it'll ask you to turn the Bluetooth on on your phone, uh, and it'll walk you through the rest of the prompts as far as connecting up. So pretty easy process there. Uh, now, info. A couple different things I like in this screen. The first is going to be if you just want general tripometer information, uh, you can get that right here versus having it you know, over here in the screen. Let me get it pulled up for you here. So whether I want it there or I prefer to have it here if I'm on a long trip, you can also put pictures on here. So right now it's just a general clock and screensaver. I could load a, a USB drive up with a picture, like a JPEG, plug it into one of these, and then download it onto here. So it's just kind of nice if you want to have pictures of your dogs, your grandkids, your favorite team, you know, whatever it may be that makes life a little bit better for you. Uh, Audio-wise, the source button up here is going to show me all my options. So I've got FM, I've got AM, I've 90 days free of satellite radio. Um, as far as a CD player, this one has a Blu-ray player down here for the back, but it also works as a CD player. So that's what's going on right there. Uh, I do have USBs that I can plug in, whether it be iPod, iPad, uh, whether it be just a USB drive that I've loaded up music to, so know that that's what that works for. So a couple of different things going there. It is Pandora compatible. If you're a Spotify guy, no big deal. You can use a Bluetooth symbol to still listen to your music. Uh, if you plug in and you're using Apple CarPlay, it's going to give you a lot of different options. So just things to keep in mind. Uh, and then you can see I do have some auxiliary uh, inputs for the rear audio. Um, and then, of course, just a standard auxiliary in. So that's what's going on from here. Moving out of that screen, Honda Link. This is set up to where you can access, you know, uh, your VIN, recall notices, uh, maintenance reminders, things like that if you want to connect up to your phone in a hotspot. So just some different things you can access. Uh, the rear audio, you can control the rear audio, so it's just kind of nice. I think I have it turned off right now, so it's not really going to do much for me. Uh, yeah, but I can control uh, things from the front of the car to the back uh, without having to jump out, you know, have reach back and grab the controller. Uh, smartphone connection, this is set up for uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So from here, that's what, if I plug in, this will light up at least for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and that gives me access to Maps, music messages, Pandora, Spotify. Um, I, I want to say group me if you're a, a message person. Uh, so just some different features and functions. So it's kind of cool. I have some videos on it if you want to see more. If you have questions, ask me. I'll be more than happy to help you. Settings. So I'm going to show you a couple different things in here under vehicle. So if you want to affect things like your door locks, um, this is where you can do it from. So as far as right now, it's set to where you hit 10 miles an hour to automatically lock the doors. You can shift that to a couple different things unlocking the door. When you get out the driver's side door, it'll then unlock the passenger doors. You can change that to a couple things. Uh, so just some different features in here uh, that you can mess with. Keyless remote access. Uh, on If you want to walk up, grab the door and it unlocks one door or both doors. So that's just what some of these features are. I'm going to back out of this. Uh, is there anything else in here I want to show you? Yeah. So in the keyless access setup, Walkway Auto Lock is a cool feature. You can enable it if you want. Uh, what it means is if I get outside of 10 feet from my car and I have not already locked the doors of my car, it can be set to lock the doors to the car automatically. So if you get halfway into the grocery store and you realize, man, I'm not sure if I locked the doors, you can do it. Uh, or it'll automatically do it, I should say. Uh, so that's kind of a rundown of the touchscreen. AC setup is tri-zone control. So left, right, and center can be controlled separately of each other. If they're synced, it all works off of this side right here, my driver's side. If they're unsynced, I can then control left and right separate each other, and the rear separate each other. To get to the rear, rear settings, from there I can control the fan, I control the, the temperature, and I can also lock it. So if I got little ones in the back that like to press buttons, I can control that. Um, heated seats, my controls are right here, so high, low, and then off. Uh, my Bluetooth, or excuse me, Blu-ray player right here. Uh, down here I've got a power outlet and two USBs. You'll notice this doesn't have a standard shifter. Uh, because of the transmission, we've done buttons in here. So it's a lot like our Acura sister brand. Uh, so when you throw it in reverse, you just pull back on that. When you do it, you'll see this come on. This car does come with parking sensors. So you can see it's alerting me to the CRV park behind me. I have three different cameras on here that I can look at. This one's actually aimed straight down. So you can see the edge of my back bumper. The dotted line is where my hatch opens to. Uh, and this is about two and a half, three feet if I'm parallel parking. Uh, so it's just kind of nice. So you can get a different view depending on what you're doing here, right? Uh, neutral, shifting into drive or sport mode. Um, these two buttons are going to be the commonly asked about. This one is going to get let you toggle between two different features as far as traction control, snow, and normal. Uh, and then this is, will actually turn on or off my um, idle stop. So that way, if I don't want the car every time I come to a complete stop for it to you know turn the engine off, uh, I can control that from right here. So it's just kind of nice. Uh, center console. Nice big center console that I've got room for. Uh, then you'll notice I do have another power outlet and USB in there. Uh, in my back, this is a white on tan model, or I should say ivory interior, so you can see my, my tan leather. I do have a Blu-ray player here. Let me see if I can flip that around so you can get an idea for what that looks like. Uh, up top, you can see the remote control that pops out, and it has, actually does charge while it's in there. So this is kind of nice. 
Uh, let me pop that on. I'll show you a couple things on it. Uh, and they can even control what's up front as far as audio if you want to allow them to. It's just, just a nice. It gives you some different options as far as you can just you say, hey, y'all want to listen to music? You pick it. Uh, and that way you're not reaching over each other or having to, you know, play DJ for whoever's in the back of the car. Uh, up here, auto dimming mirror. You do have a home link, which allows you to connect up your garage clicker, gate clicker, anything like that. Standard sunglasses holder. It does have a mirror so you can keep an eye on the people in the back. Uh, Moonroof. You know, I can obviously work it from right here. This controls the uh, these mapping lights for when I open the doors. You can control that for this switch right here. Um, the car does have sunshades. I don't know if I can reach that, but you can see the tab right there to pull them up. Uh, and then you can connect them to the top up there uh, to prevent sun on if you got little ones in the back. If you have any questions about this car, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can always call me 512-443-4300 and ask for Justin. You can comment on the YouTube video and I'll be more than happy to help you. Or you can email me at jfuller, that's the letter J. And then fuller at howdyhonda.com. Thank you much.